Okay, Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good day again everyone. Today we will be discussing about division of monomials. And this division of monomials will soon lead into division of polynomials. Okay, so firstly, before we proceed to the actual lesson, I would just like to remind you about um, some prior information that you need to know before we start dividing. First one, our first skill that you need to have is you need to know how to divide numbers. And not just numbers, but you need to know how to divide integers. Okay? The next one is you need to know how to divide variables. Okay? And the division of variables would fall under the quotient quotient rule of the rules uh, of the loss of exponent part. Okay, so let's start. Let's uh, have our first example. I would uh, uh, consider that you already know how to divide variables. Okay, so let's say we have number 1. We have m raised to 10 over m raised to 5. Okay, so as for this one, what would happen here is since there are no numbers involved here, it, we would go immediately, immediately to the division of variables. And according to the quotient rule of the loss of exponent, if you are dividing a letter or a variable to its uh, to the same letter but with different exponents, the exponents will be subtracted. Okay, the numerator, for example, here, m over raised to n over m. No, no, no. Let's have a pala. Say so we have a raised to n and we have a raised to m. So what would happen here is I would copy the variable and I would subtract the numerator exponent to the denominator exponent. Okay? Say, same goes on this case. Since they have the same letter, copy the letter. Take the numerator minus the denominator exponent, giving you a final answer of m raised to 5. And this would be your division part. And that would be it. That's, uh, that's how easy it would be. Okay, the simply subtraction of the exponent. In any case class, that there would be an involvement. So let's go to the next example. There would be an involvement of a number and multiple letters. The the rule would stand still. Okay, the rule will stand still. That the numbers will be divided to the numbers and the letters would be divided to the letters. Corresponding, um, the numerator letter will be divided to the corresponding denominator letters. Okay? So in this case, A would be divided to A and not B, and B will be divided to B. Okay? So that would be 4 divided by 2, so let's proceed immediately. Na lang. 4 divided by 2, and then we have A divided by A, and then we have B divided by B. Okay? So 4 divided by 2 will give us an answer of 2, and A, okay, A divided by A squared will give you an answer of A, 1 minus 2. So, I'm just writing it down. Eh? Then, on the other hand, we have b cubed minus 2. Okay, b raised to 3 minus 2. So, what would happen here is we try to evaluate our exponents. So, since 2 is already um, divided, so we leave it as is. And a would be a minus 2, uh, 1 minus 2. And what is 1 minus 2? 1 minus 2 would give you an answer of negative 1. As for b, that would be 3 minus 2, that it will give an answer of b raised to 1. And in mathematics, we are not allowed to have negative exponents. So that's why what we do here is we need to transpose, uh, not transpose, we need to transfer this a raised to negative 1 below to change the sign. Okay? So what would happen here is this would be 2b, and since a is negative 1, you will bring it down to the denominator we have a. Okay? Or basically, it would go... So, this would be your final answer. Okay? Or basically, it would go like this. Let's, have, let's repeat our given. So, we have 4ab cubed all over 2a squared b squared. So, what would happen here is the numbers will di be divided as is. But as for the letters, you will take the letter with the biggest exponent and reduce that by the letter, same letter with the least exponent. So, this is 2. And this is 1. So instead of um, subtracting 1, 
uh, instead of having 1 minus 2, you will have 2 minus 1 kasi 2 is below. Nandito siya sa baba. Okay? So, what would happen there would be, A would be down 2 minus 1. And as for the B, since B is the, B cube is the larger exponent, it would stay above. Okay? So, the, the clue here would be, whichever is the largest exponent between the two. Okay? That would be the location of your subtraction of exponents. And this would be still the same, 2B raised to 1, or simply 2B, over A raised to 1, or simply A. Same answer. Okay? So, let's have an example, another example that is similar to that. Um, say we have 27 u squared v cubed all over 18 u sorry let me write my given properly okay 18 u raised to 4 v raised to 5 so what would happen here let's try to use this one this method okay so dividing 27 and 18 okay um just by if you would have your calculators with you or if you know how to divide 27 and 18 definitely that would give you an answer of a fraction Okay, so the fraction would be 3 halves. Now, as for this one, I extended the fraction a little bit because you will notice here, okay, you will notice here that the exponent, there are similar exponents, I mean similar variables here, okay, with different exponents having exponents of the other one larger than the other. So, in this case, let's check for the u. In the u squared and u raised to 4, the bigger one is u raised to 4, meaning your answer would be on the denominator kasi you will always place your answer on the area or on the side with the largest exponent. So, itong u raised to 4 is larger than u squared. Therefore, your answer for u would be below. And 4 minus 2, the answer is 2. Next, let's check for the v. The v will have the largest exponent on the denominator. Since it's on the denominator, you will place v here, and 5 minus 3, the answer is 2. And since on the above, on the numerator part, okay, there's no variable that will be available there, so I will just simply rewrite my given properly, and this should, I would just simply place 3 in the middle, because it looks ugly. So this would be your final answer. Okay? So again, we are just simply subtracting exponents. For, okay? So let's have another example. Say we have... Um, 13 c raised to 9 d raised to 10 and we have 26 c raised to 9 and d okay? so what would happen here so as for the numbers you evaluate them as is so what is 23, uh, 13 divided by um, 26 the answer is just simply 1 half Okay, extend the, exp uh, the fraction bar a little bit so that you will have place to places to put your variables. Okay, so let's check for the C. C is C raised to 9 and divided by C raised to 9. So what do you think? No, nothing is larger and nothing is smaller, meaning there's no where, there, there's no way for you to locate where will I put it. Will I put it on the numerator or denominator? So there's no way because they are the same. But then again, let's have a concept of this. Um, let's have an example of this. If I have, say, 4 divided by 4, the answer would definitely be 1. 5 divided by 5, the answer would definitely be 1. So meaning, if I divide the number to itself, the answer would always be 1. So if I have a divided by a, same number or same variable, uh, the concept is it being the same. You're dividing a number to itself or you're dividing something to itself, the answer would always be 1. So, in this case, this is c raised to 9 and divided by c raised to 9 again. So, they are the same, therefore, giving you an answer of 1. Okay? So, therefore, this would be cancelled out. And in cancellation, okay, in cancellation, if there would be nothing left, you put 1. But if there would be some, um, it, if it would be beside something, then you do not place it. Okay po. So, since meron na tayong number dito na 1 and 2, huwag na natin siyang ilagay. Okay? So, next, we go to the D. D raised to 10 and D. The bigger letter, or the, I mean, the bigger exponent here is 10. So, therefore, we put the D above. Then, we have 10 minus none or simply 1. Kasi, if there is no exponent, automatically it's 1. 10 minus 1, the answer is 9. 
and it's still not cos cosmetically good looking I say there's still one here I did told you before and I will repeat it again if one is beside something any variable it will disappear only under multiplication so if you have you have this given say say 1x it's just simply x so this is 1 d raised to 9 so it's just d raised to 9 all over 2 next um, example letter e say we have 3 s raised to 5 t raised to 7 and we have 3 s raised to 5 t raised to 7 so again i did told you if, if you are dividing a number to itself or something to itself the answer would be 1 so this would be simply 1 next s the s and 5 s and 5 just simply 1 right but then again there's already an existing number therefore you will not place 1 and t raised to 7 divided by t raised to 7 the answer is 1 then again there is already an existing number so you do not place 1 and lastly guys okay and i will repeat this again if one do not have anything beside it under multiplication it will appear so since there is no other term beside one here so therefore your answer would be one okay so let me just clarify on that uh, say i have one times two so it's just simply two one times x is simply x so one always vanishes if there is something beside it under multiplication it's always multiplication okay so let's have another example a b c d e f so let's have example number letter f say we have 48 a cube b c raised to 5 all over 12 a raised to 5 b cube and c squared a little bit long but still tolerable so we have 48 divided by 12 calculator the answer would be 4 but then again it's a fraction so you will still have your fraction bar let's check for the a's the a's the highest exponent is 5 so we place the a below and then that is 5 minus 3 because of the exponents you're given a squared for the b b and b cube b cube is bigger it's on the denominator so your b will be below and 3 minus 1 kasi may 1 yan so the answer is 2 and as for the c, c raised to 5 and c squared, c raised to 5 is the larger va variable or the larger letter. Therefore, it will be placed above. I will just move my 4 here. And c will be here. And 5 minus 2, the answer is 3. Everything is pick and span. Everything looks nice. No repeated letter. Therefore, this would be your final answer. Next, let's have our last example. Let's have something more like B, C, D, E, F, G. Let's have something more complicated. So, um, so we have 24 um, x, I mean the similar as this one, x squared y cubed z raised to 4 divided by negative 44 x raised to 4 y cubed z squared. Okay? So dividing this one, we can use our calculator, of course. So 24 divided by negative 44, the answer is just simply 6 over 11. But since that is a negative number, so you will have a negative here on the side. Checking the x's, which one is bigger, x squared or x raised to 4? Definitely x raised to 4. It's on the denominator, therefore I will place it here. And 4 minus 2, the answer is 2. It's not z for i, it's 2. Next y cube y cube same therefore it would be cancelled out and last one we have z raised to 4 and z squared z raised to 4 is the bigger letter or bigger variable with high expo higher exponent and 4 minus 2 the answer is simply 2 and again check your answer no more repeated letters no um all the given is divided all the numbers are divided if you are done with um with those checking not, uh, everything checks out therefore this would be your final answer okay so that is how we divide monomials it's just simply division of numbers and at the same time subtraction of exponents okay so a little bit easy 
Now, when it comes to division of, um, I'll just give you a heads up. When it comes to division of um, polynomials, it's just simply another case of distributive method or distributive property, okay? And there are other means of um, dividing um, polynomials as well. But we will go that maybe in your later grade levels, okay? So thank you everyone for listening. I hope if you will ha be having any other questions, you can ask in our class or you can chat me personally. Again, thank you and assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.